I was recently watching some morning routine videos and I feel like they had all these either weird recommendations or obvious recommendations. Like one told me to take a cold shower in the morning to give a jolt to my system and to burn calories. And I'm not gonna do that, especially not in the long run. Like realistically, I'm just not gonna take a cold shower every morning. And then another was telling me to move my body and to exercise in the morning. And it's like, thanks a lot. I know I'm supposed to be doing that, but do I always do it? No, that's the problem. It's the motivation. Being told to do it isn't gonna help me. And so I wanna do a different type of morning routine video, one that will hopefully actually help you. As someone who gave therapy for years and studied psychology, I know that different people have different problems, have different challenges, have different things that they need, and there is no one size fits all. And what I would often do as a therapist is to use two strategies. One is to use positive psychology to capitalize on what works, and second, to do a functional analysis of behavior to figure out what's not working and to fix that. Now that sounds maybe like fancy jargon, but let me break it down for you in a way that will actually help your morning routine and set your day off right. The first thing that could be helpful to ask is what in my morning routine is currently working for me? What should I feel good about in how I approach the mornings? What helps boost my energy or get me motivated for the day? What sorts of things do I already do that sets the day off right? And part of this is also just self-appreciation because I feel like sometimes when we try to fix a part of our lives, we feel bad about it. Like, ugh, I'm doing it wrong. I see a video that's telling me I'm supposed to do this or that. I don't do that. And then you fail to recognize what you're already doing to set yourself off on the right path. And so part of it is just creating a good feeling around your morning routine and then expanding upon what is working for you. A second thing to do is to look at your morning and figure out what's missing. Figure out where those gaps are. So are you the type of person who always snoozes their alarm and hates that? You feel like you're wasting a bunch of time and getting up feels that much more arduous and unpleasant. Maybe it means then really focusing on how to get up after your first alarm. Maybe it's just focusing on that and making that be your big goal for the week. Maybe for that, it's figuring out also how to make the morning more pleasant and fun for you so that you wanna get out of bed in the morning. I guess what I'm saying here is to use your own knowledge of yourself and what works and what doesn't work for you, what motivates you, what doesn't motivate you, to change your life in the morning. Think about all the different, maybe even weird or funny strategies you could try to improve that little part of your life. So in case you have a similar problem to me, like you're just not a morning person, or maybe you are, but you don't feel like you're getting the most out of it, I thought I would also share the specific strategies that have helped me make my mornings more empowering and more energizing. I'd urge you to stick around, but before I get into that, I wanna really quickly talk about the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning platform with classes on all kinds of topics. You may know Skillshare for classes in photography, film and video editing and illustration, but did did you know Skillshare has hundreds of career-focused classes too? I know as I shifted careers into something creative, I use Skillshare all the time to improve my actual creative skills, but also to build my own business. What I really like about Skillshare is that they have so many different classes that are genuinely helpful to improve my quality of life, to learn new skills, to gain more financial stability, but they're also fun. Like, you know classes that are engaging, that pull you in, that make you wanna keep watching? Skillshare has those. Skillshare is one of the first companies I started working with for sponsorships for YouTube, and I'm still working with them because I absolutely love taking their courses. I found that it's a fun way for me to actually unwind at the end of the day, get my mind off of stressful things, but also be doing something that feels productive and that helps me grow as a person. Most recently, I was taking the course, Start Your Creative Career, Build a Sharp, Smart Online Presence, created by Sonia Rasula, and it helped me learn a lot more on brand building and analytics. What's really exciting is that if you have any interest in just even dabbling in Skillshare, the first 1,000 people to hit the link in the description box below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So if you're interested, check that link out. 
So now let me get into the things I personally do to improve my mornings. The first little thing I do that I have heard in other videos, but that I just really like is to have a nice glass of water in the morning with a lemon or lime and then also a coffee. And I get that as soon as I get downstairs just to kind of boost my system. It's a little something that helps me look forward to that time in the morning. A second thing I do is to add a little bit of surplus time in the morning. And what this does for me is it just reduces the stress in the morning by having just a bit more time. Even just the act of getting ready feels more enjoyable and relaxed rather than rushed and hurried. So I can use that time for some exercise, moving my body a little bit, or doing something just for me or even something nice for somebody else. If it's something nice for me, it feels like great me time, like I'm taking care of myself. And if it's a little favor for somebody else, it makes me feel accomplished right at the beginning of the day. I'll get something done, like maybe unloading the dishwasher, tidying up a little bit so my space feels cleared out when I'm starting to work for the day. I'll play with Ginger or take her on a five to 10 minute walk. I can accomplish what feels most important to me during that time right away. A third thing that's worked for me is to temptation bundle. And this especially works for when I need to get some things done in the morning that aren't that fun to me, like maybe I wanna do some tidying or some kitchen work and I don't feel like doing that first thing. Well, temptation bundling is this concept that has actually been studied in social psychology that has you pair something you don't like to do with something you do like to do. And by doing that, it helps you start to associate good feelings with the thing that you don't like to do. And eventually you even start to kind of look forward to it. Part of this is trying to restrict how much you're able to do that fun thing outside of that time so that it feels that much more special. So for me, that means maybe saving my favorite podcast to only listen to while I'm unloading the dishwasher or cleaning the kitchen. A fourth strategy I use is to plan my day with intention, but also with a dash of spontaneity. Taking the time to sit down and actually write down, or at the very least to think through what my priorities are for the day really helps me stay focused and to make sure I'll accomplish things that day that will make me feel good. What I try to do in making my list of priorities is to not make it too long, just focus on the really important things and then to think through what is the one thing that's stressing me out the most that if I got done would relieve the most amount of anxiety. And then to think about what is a task that often gets brushed to the side because maybe it's toward a longer term goal rather than those like immediate needs and to figure out how to fit that into my day as well. I think one of the biggest problems a lot of people face is boredom, especially now that a lot of us work from home and aren't engaging as socially. Like there's research to show that people tend to have fewer friends and spend less time socially than they did decades ago. So I know for me at least, if I think in the morning, what's something fun I could look forward to today? I'm way more likely to actually engage with my work because I'm looking forward to that thing. And I know that there's gonna be something fun. A fifth strategy for me is to add an element of regularity to my morning. And this is where the concept of routine fits in. Now, I personally don't like to get too stuck on like routines and that you need to do the same thing every morning, because to me, sometimes that can get a little dull or when I feel like I don't complete the routine, I set myself up for failure. I'm like, Ugh, I didn't get my full routine done. Today is going to be a bad day. And so I do like an element of flexibility and adjusting depending on your mood, your energy level, maybe you're sick or just dealing with something bigger than your morning routine. But at the same time, it is nice if you can find one thing you do every morning that's just regular. For me, it's integrating just a few moments of stillness. That is something I can do every single morning, even like three to 10 seconds, I'm talking seconds of stillness, where I just smell the air, look at the colors around me, notice what I'm hearing, notice what I'm seeing, maybe focus on the taste of the coffee or the water that I'm sipping. For me, at least, a little moment of stillness and mindfulness centers me for the day. And that's something that's regular that I can always fit in. And even if I forget to do it first thing, maybe sometime later in the day, I can fit it in. A sixth strategy I use is to self-reflect. And this can kind of fit into the planning of your day, but I do think it's a separate thing where you look back at the last day or two and you just think, how do I feel about those days? What went well? How can I keep doing more of that? What didn't go well? How could I avoid that or adjust for that in the future? 
And I know this feels obvious, but I feel like so often we're on autopilot and just going through our days without thinking, and then the day just goes by, and then we do the same things over and over again and make the same mistakes. Self-reflection is so empowering. And I remember in grad school, I kept hearing this piece of research repeated over and over again as I was learning to be a therapist, is that the best therapists are those that self-reflect after sessions because it helps them improve over time. And while that principle is specific to therapists and therapy, I think the principle can be expanded to most situations. Taking the time to think through that, it can even be really quickly, can maybe set you off in a slightly better direction. And that's the thing with trajectory. You know, if you just change the angle of your trajectory slightly, if you just make a little shift in how you approach things, over time that little bit of an angle change really affects where you are. Evaluating how you're doing at work or in your personal life and trying to just grow all the time, I feel like you're just more likely to find satisfaction and ultimately that's what I'm looking for. So that's most of what I have for you. If you enjoyed this video, I'll put another video that I think you'll like at the end of this video. So definitely click it and check it out. And then also, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you liked the video. Doing those things really helps support the channel. And also hit the bell alert notification button to be notified when new videos come out. Anyway, thanks so much for spending this little bit of time with me, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.